Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It is time for an update on our efforts to stop the encryption of over-the-air television. If you haven't been following this story, definitely check out my playlist in the video description to get caught up. In a nutshell, we're in the process of transitioning over to a new over-the-air television standard. And what the broadcasters want to do, the biggest ones, is encrypt the signal and make it very difficult for people to record content the way that they do today or put it onto a home gateway device so you can watch TV in your house on your phone. All of these freedoms we enjoy today with over-the-air TV are going away if we don't stop it. So we've had this effort to get before the FCC to let them know that consumers are not happy about this. We've had thousands of people file onto the FCC docket Tyler, the antenna man, and I actually met with the FCC a few weeks ago. Now, following the meeting that Tyler and I had with the FCC, the nation's largest broadcasters through their attorneys had their own meeting where they talked about some of the issues that Tyler and I raised, and they filed what's called an ex parte letter, which you see on screen here. And this letter describes what they talked about in their meeting. And everything in this letter is contradicting what they have said earlier, both to the media, to consumers, and to the FCC. So let's take a closer look. Now, in their meeting, the broadcasters have reiterated their more recent position that the only way to make this transition happen is to force it through a government mandate. Now, this position is relatively new for the broadcasters. They had wanted to make this a voluntary a market-driven thing along with all of the other partners that have been in this. And they're telling the FCC now, after saying for years it should be voluntary and market-driven, that, hey, we're not going to do this market-driven thing anymore. Let's just force it. And if we force it, that, of course, is going to get the consumer electronics manufacturers on board because they're just waiting for that mandate to happen. And that, of course, was uh, rebutted by the Consumer Technology Association, who represents all of the consumer electronics manufacturers. They said, hey, Let's not forget that this was supposed to be a voluntary process and the market has not responded. Unfortunately, the CTA doesn't go the rest of the way in their statement here, uh, which is that the reason the market hasn't responded is because of the DRM. The CTA does have some conflicts here because Google is one of their members and Google is the one supplying the encryption technology to the broadcasters. But the CTA did invite public knowledge along with them to this meeting and public knowledge at the same meeting asserted all of the issues that we've been talking about, which is that DRM is the root cause of the consumer adoption issue. And that's because they have gatekeeped what devices can come onto the market. They have limited the functions of those devices so that consumers can't use them the way they want in the privacy of their own home and a whole host of other issues that we've been talking about. Public knowledge has taken the lead among all the other consumer advocacy nonprofits. So they are working with the EFF and others uh, to keep bringing this message out to the FCC that DRM is bad news. And it was good to see that both organizations met with the FCC together to rebut what the broadcasters met with them about a few weeks earlier. But let's go back to what the broadcasters just told the FCC in their meeting, that the reason why this market hasn't materialized is because the FCC hasn't mandated the transition date yet. That is in direct contradiction to what they've been telling all of us all along since this started. So if we go back to 2019, when these ATSC3 broadcasts first went on the air, Ann Shell, who's the director of Pearl TV, this is the same group of people that are running the A3SA encryption authority that is gatekeeping all of this hardware. She said that the chicken or egg question about the introduction of new television services has been answered. We're gonna have great signals, great consumer technology because there's all sorts of cool boxes coming out and people are going to have a lot of choice. Now of note here, the signals on ATSC3 were not yet encrypted when these statements were made. So there was a lot to be excited about. I had some optimism, the antenna man had some optimism. I was looking forward to trying out all this stuff. And then of course the encryption happened a few years later. Then in 2021, Pearl TV, the same organization, was talking about all these great devices that were coming out, how LG is going to have tuners in their televisions. They had to take them out over patent issues. Uh, Samsung and Sony were on board. And then, of course, they started talking about all the set-top boxes you might be able to get as well. One of the set-top boxes that Ann Shell, the director of Pearl TV, pointed to was the HD Home Run Gateway device, which we have noted many times on this channel, has not been allowed to decrypt the encrypted signals by these broadcasters. They just simply won't let that box 
get approved for the decryption, yet they were touting it as a potential solution for customers in 2021 before the DRM rolled out. More on this in a little bit. Then in 2023, they also were spouting out how exciting everything was about their scale and how in less than four years that next gen tv as of 2023 had reached 60 percent of television viewers i think now they're saying it's 80 percent and they're talking about their partnerships and how everything is going great there's more than 120 receiver models for consumers to choose from i don't know if that number ever came to fruition but as of just a year or two ago they were excited about all the different things that were going to happen that year they also filed this statement to the fcc in regards to tuner availability where they said the device market is active in producing receivers. Where's the problem? And they went on to say uh, that the next gen TV devices have a plethora of options for consumers. And the crazy thing about this 2023 filing was that the broadcasters were urging the FCC to stay out of the tuner market and not regulate the patent pool. This was after LG got sued over their ATSC3 tuner and eventually pulled all those ATSC3 tuners out of their television sets. And despite that setback, the broadcaster said, no, FCC, stay out. We'll take care of it. The market's fine. But apparently now the market is not fine and they want the mandate to force the market onto consumers. And clearly there are some issues here. Now let's go to another contradiction here because remember back in 2021, they were talking about how great these gateway devices were going to be and how consumers could consume television the same way they do today. However, the HD Home Run Box has been denied certification for DRM. And in their most recent meeting with the FCC, the broadcasters deny that they're doing any gatekeeping. They even went as far to say that we do not certify hardware components or chips within devices. Yet a month earlier, this very same law firm was sending letters to the FCC saying the reason why the HD home run device hasn't been certified is because of the chips inside of it. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. We covered this a few weeks ago. I mean, seriously, do they think the FCC and all of us are that stupid that we can't remember something that they filed the month before that directly contradicts what they're saying here? But here you go. And not only did they make this really nasty filing on the public docket, they also CC'd half the world, including all of the industry press and then anyone at the FCC with any kind of authority over consumer devices as well. So hopefully those lawyers are getting their hourly rate here, but I mean, really, it's just completely disingenuous. Now, over the years that I've been working on this issue, I've had a number of off the record conversations with broadcast executives trying to let them know that the direction they're taking here is not good for their business and certainly not good for consumers. And although they haven't been rude to me, they have dug their heels in. They believe they are absolutely correct in this DRM approach and that it's absolutely necessary for the future of their industry. It might be because their industry relies more on subscription fees than it does on actual viewers, but that's another topic for another day. Uh, but it's just clear to me in all of these discussions that they really don't understand the technology that they're unleashing uh, through this DRM system. They're trying to bolt on an encryption standard that was designed for the web and trying to make it work over broadcast, which as we're seeing, doesn't translate. It just doesn't work the way they think it's going to work. But they continue to dig their heels in. Now, many of those discussions have been off the record. I can't really share them with you. But the other day I was in a discussion on LinkedIn in public that I can share with you in regards to the high noon issue that we talked about two weeks ago. Now, what this is about is that even if your station doesn't want to encrypt its signal, you still need to purchase a certificate from the nation's largest broadcasters in order to certify your broadcast as being legitimate. If you don't have the certificate or if they decide to pull it, your TV station won't display on a certified ATSC3 tuner, even if you're completely legal to broadcast per your FCC license. It is a very dangerous precedent here. This was brought out by Kyle Walker, who's the VP of technology at Weigel Broadcasting. And by the way, Kyle is one of the good guys who really understands just how bad this DRM standard is and how poorly it's being rolled out. And he's been very outspoken along with his company about how bad all of this stuff is. And he did a very extensive filing with the FCC that again, we talked about two weeks ago. And then he shared that on his LinkedIn page in a public post. And one of the people replying to him uh, was Kerry Oslin, who is an executive at Scripps. He's currently in charge of their AI strategy. 
And here it's clear that these executives just don't get it. He's trying to compare encryption uh, with the secure SSL technology for your website. He said, if you don't put the S in front of your website, you're going to get hacked in a second. You know that's not the case. There's a lot more to hacking a website than that. I got into it with him a little bit to say, hey, protect consumers against what? When was the last time a TV station was hijacked? It was 1987, and that hijacking didn't take over the broadcast signal. Somebody got in before the main broadcast went out and swapped out their microwave feed from the studio to the transmitter, which means that if that signing certificate existed in 1987, that broadcast would have been put in pre-encryption and would have been perfectly signed on the way out. And Kerry replies back to me, says, oh, God, not you. And I said, yes, me, the consumer here. Uh, he did say that, well, last year the Russians were taking over Ukrainian airwaves. Nothing to worry about here, right? Well, guess what? I looked into that Russian hijacking of TV. And what they did in Russia was exactly what happened with the 1987 uh, issue that happened in Chicago, where the Russian hackers got in before the main broadcast. In this case, they took over a satellite backhaul which then was sent down to the transmitter and broadcast out. Again, this would have been something that would have gotten signed because it came in pre-encryption, which is how the hijackers were able to do it. So this signing certificate is just not necessary, and it's happening all the time, according to the satellite company, where people are getting into those satellite backhauls, and the Ukrainians have done it to the Russians as well. And so once again, it just shows that they're not aware of all these issues. And I said to him, look, it's not that simple. If you really want to take over a broadcast station, you need a lot of equipment, you need a lot of power, and you need a huge antenna in order to be able to hijack a television signal in that way. But they just don't get it. They just think they need this stuff because somebody told them that they needed it. They hired an engineer to implement it, but of course, consumers are not considered as part of any of this. So they're really just driving their business into the ground. When I asked him to reply to that, he said, we've all said our piece, so peace, we both love TV. They've got nothing to say. So there you go. That's our latest set of broadcast contradictions here. It's really unfortunate that it's gotten to this point. If they listen to consumers, they may have been able to come up with something that might have worked. But the reality is here, they've dug their heels in on what they're trying to put together. The market has not responded the way they said it was responding. And now they're requiring or asking for a government mandate to force this market to create itself, which is not going to happen. But I know a great way to make this market happen real quick. Stop the encryption today. I can guarantee you things will be a lot different for over-the-air television viewing, but they're not going to do that unless the FCC tells them to. So hopefully that's the mandate we get. The mandate is no encryption and no private regulation of the public airwaves. That's one that I can get behind. That'll do it for now. Let me know what you thought down in the comments section. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.